So I asked the First Minister about the Scottish Government's response to reports that police officer numbers dropped to 16,610 at the end of June below Police Scotland's full officer establishment of 17,234. First Minister. Officer numbers fluctuate due to the cycle of recruitment and retirement. These latest statistics reflect uh, the impact of COVID restrictions and also COP26, which reduced capacity to train new recruits at the Scottish Police College. They also reflect the impact of recent pension changes. It is important to note, however, uh, that a further 300 officers were recruited in July. These are not yet reflected um, in the statistics uh, that have been quoted. Um, on the 2nd of August, HM Inspector of Constabulary in Scotland published its assurance review of Police Scotland's st strategic workforce planning um, and recommended a focus on developing a workforce based on the skill set and mix required to meet current and future challenges for policing in Scotland. Uh, while the recruitment and deployment of police officers in Scotland is, of course, a matter for the Chief Constable, the Scottish Government will continue to discuss this and other recommendations with the SPA and Police Scotland. Pauline McNeill. I acknowledge that the figures will fluctuate from uh, week to week, but I, I see that the Scottish Government have ushered in a permanent reduction in police establishment numbers, which is around 600 officers. And if that wasn't concerning enough, Chief Constable Ian Livingston is on record as saying that cuts to the police budget we are, means we are already seeing the impact of our service having fewer officers across a range of operational areas, including a responsiveness to calls from the public. And I understand that that could be potentially up to 1,000 additional officers from our service. And bear in mind, First Minister, you will know that 80% of calls to Police Scotland are not crime related. Importantly, marking out the specifically distinct Scottish nature of our police service responsible for well-being that I hope that she will defend. So I asked the First Minister, is she concerned about the Chief Constable's comments and the effect of brutal cuts in police numbers. And what action will the First Minister take to ensure that the resilience of the police service and our police officers can do their jobs? And actually, I do plead with her to recognise that unlike other forces in the UK, police services in Scotland have a distinct nature and we should never accept losing that. First Minister. Well, I lead a government that has, of course, worked throughout the entire time uh, we've been in government to, to protect uh, police numbers uh, and to work to support uh, our police officers and those uh, staff who support our police officers. Uh, we will continue to discuss uh, these uh, issues in what is a very difficult context uh, with the Chief Constable, with Police Scotland uh, and, of course, with the Scottish Police Authority. We will always do everything we can to support the work, uh, the well-being and the resilience of our police officers. They do a fantastic job day in and day out. In fact, let me take the opportunity to thank the police for the outstanding work they did, of course, recently uh, during Operation Unicorn. Um, so we will continue to do everything to support our police and, of course, our other public services. Presiding officer, though, it is incumbent on me again to point out the reality of the context that we are operating in. We are operating within an essentially fixed budget that has already uh, this year been eroded because of inflation to the tune of £1.7 billion. Uh, we are trying to give public sector workers the fairest possible pay increases, and I'm pleased we were able to conclude a pay deal uh, with the police. Uh, so these are difficult situations uh, and force us uh, into difficult decisions. Uh, we come at this uh, with a determination to protect public services. But I'd say to uh, Polly McNeill, as I would say to any member across this chamber, in these really tough times, uh, many of which are completely beyond the control of this government. If there are different decisions you think we should be making, then come and say that. But you can't simply ask us to spend more money in one area without also saying where you think we should spend less. That's the responsibility that is demanded of government right now, and I think it's the responsibility people demand of all of their politicians at this difficult time. Jamie Green.